Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling welcoming you to the Total Health Channel. I should point out that there are other Total Health Channels. You might not find me unless you type in Total Health Richard Ruling. Not sure, but just uh, uh, there's another, I discovered another Total Health Channel when I uh, typed it into YouTube. Let's ask God's uh, blessing on our time together. Heavenly Father, we uh, need and invite your presence again through your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this rich gift, which uh, is to lead and guide us into truth and uh, help us to see it as you see it, as you intended in the scripture. And uh, bless our time together to the intent that uh, you'll do exceeding abundantly for Christ's sake. Amen. Today's topic is uh, Revelation, the day of the Lord, and five places that an earthquake is encoded. Uh, we're looking primarily at Revelation 1, the start of Revelation, and in the 10th verse, John heard a, a, the, a great voice as of a trumpet. And uh, the next verse talks about, I am Alpha, Omega, first and last. If you apply the, the idea of what is called the rule of first use, where a word or phrase is first found in the Bible, it often has a meaning or context for end times because of this Alpha, Omega, first and last. Christ is the word. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, so the meanings will be consistent. And because John heard a voice of a trumpet, if you go to where you first heard trumpet in the Bible or see it, it is in Exodus 19 when uh, it was a mini judgment day. And uh, it, God was on the mountain. The mountain had smoke and fire. It shook. Earthquake, okay. There was an earthquake then. People were afraid. They were terrified. And they didn't want <laughs> more encounters like that. They told Moses, you talk to him. But we, we, don't, we don't want to talk to God. So uh, that was the, the circumstances. And, uh, but the point I'm making of this is that uh, it's just not an odd coincidence. I believe the end times will be uh, f uh, full of fear. Uh, it, it will convey, the earthquake that's coming will convey the idea that we have failed to convey as a church, fear God, give glory to him, the time of his judgment has come. It will, that uh, uh, mini judgment day in Exodus 19 was a, a, an illustration of end time judgment day, I think. And if we understand it, uh, uh, the, the very next, uh, I think it's verse you know, I'm, I'm not sure about which verse, but John, in that same chapter of, of uh, uh, Revelation 1, s said that the, he, the sea was roaring as a, like the voice of many waters. Well, if you go back again to where you find that, it's in the context of the earthquake in Isaiah 6. Isaiah was called to be a prophet amid an earthquake. It says in uh, 6 verse uh, 1 or 2, the posts of the door moved at the voice of him. It, it shook, and the house was filled with smoke, I think because the censer tipped over. But the context immediately before, the verse just before Isaiah 6, it was the, uh, the sea roaring and, and lions roaring. The, the roar uh, is connected with an earthquake as well. And so... Uh, uh, and I believe that it's, it's very possible that if we are watching and ready at the time, God can call us to be his prophet in the end times. I believe the 144,000 may have a prophetic role. Christ, uh, as we know, was uh, the, the greatest of all prophets. And he foretold the future like in Matthew 24. But uh, he says, follow me. Uh, uh, you know, and if we follow him, he went through the succeeding roles of prophet, priest, he's ministering, uh, interceding for us, and finally king. And we can be uh, going through those same roles of prophet, priest, and we will rule with him. Uh, the 144,000, he says he will make him ruler over all that he has in Luke 12, verse 44. So this is something that, you know, for those of you that really want to do more than uh, just uh, garden in heaven for uh, the millenniums, I would just say, uh, go for it. Uh, give it your best. Uh, I heard a, a um, video yesterday while, as I was eating my lunch with David Gates, and they were grilling him on the fact that he had been wrong in some of his expectations previously. And he said, well, I'm not a prophet. I'm an administrator. And he, he, uh, my heart goes out to David because uh, he has... Uh, 
uh, he said, 40 airplanes uh, internationally and 25 uh, uh, TV networks for the media. Doing a great work. Now, I have no criticism of him on, on that respect. But I, I, and I might send him a link, though, that I think we should, you know, Moses at one point was told there's somebody out in the camp prophesying. And Moses' response was, would to God that all of his people were prophets. And I think the 144,000 can do that and be there. Uh, the a f further parallel on this is the fact that when they came out of Egypt, they, s the Red Sea split and they walked through on dry ground. But when they came to uh, the Jordan River, it wasn't that way. They had to walk into the water. They had to believe that it was going to happen. And I think God is looking for mature Christians at this point who can look back, look at the words, uh, and understand the meaning. And as Ellen White says in her last comment in the Bible Commentary, Volume 4, on uh, the Old Testament, it's Malachi 4, page 1184, the eighth paragraph, last paragraph on the page. She says, as John the Baptist uh, in preparing a people for the first advent, called people's attention to the Ten Commandments. So we are to give, in no uncertain sound, the message, fear God, give glory to him, the time of his judgment has come. Well, my question is, how can we proclaim a time of judgment if we don't know when it is? We should know that it's impending. Uh, the context of Revelation 1 is, John said he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, but I think it was day of the Lord. He was shown the day of the Lord uh, from chapter 1 to chapter 22. And uh, it's all there, part of the end time as we see the beginning of the seventh millennium. And if we understood it properly, I believe the timing is such that, that we are entering the seventh millennium now. Uh, Peter says, be not ignorant, a thousand years is like a day, a day like a thousand years. God is not slack, the day of the Lord will come. And how do we arrive at this? How do we understand it? If we take the Jubilees of 49 years and Daniel 9's prophecy of 490 years, 10 Jubilees, fast forward 50 and you come to 1995 when Pope John Paul went to the UN on the Day of Atonement, which was the day to proclaim Jubilee. And then a 20 year gap until Pope Francis also went to the UN, also on a Day of Atonement. And how do we understand the 20 year gap? Well, if we put the, the uh, jubilees into the thousand years that Peter said don't be ignorant about, you have 490 and 490 more make 980. There are 20 years left over. So I'm saying that when the Pope Francis in 2015 stood in the UN on the Day of Atonement, I believe that was the end of 6,000 years, basically, uh, marking the end of a thousand. And that uh, we are entering a time of judgment 2 Peter 3, 7 uh, refers to the time of judgment where things are reserved into fire for the day of judgment. And since uh, last year, we saw fires in Hawaii, unprecedented fires in California. Uh, Paradise was destroyed by a fire in California. And uh, uh, other judgment type issues on the, on the new moon of each month since last September, big events. And I think we're entering a time of judgment. And this, this spring will tell the tale, but uh, we should be watching and looking for uh, big events. Uh, I think Jerusalem will be surrounded with a, a military. It says in Zechariah 14, 1, uh, Behold, the day of the Lord comes, and I'll gather all nations against Jerusalem, not just Rome. And so if we see that, heads up for uh, America uh, a month later, which is second Passover, as the days of Noah, etc. I think, based on uh, what we, the title of this talk today is about how an earthquake is encoded five places in Revelation. We've talked about two of them, the, the great trumpet in verse, uh, Revelation 1.10. Then uh, there's the uh, voice of many waters, roaring of the sea. Uh, the roaring is, again, the idea of, a, of an earthquake. Uh, the knock in Revelation 3.20, when Christ says, I stand at the door and knock. That church, lukewarm with uh, materialism, ended in an earthquake. Serious knock. Uh, I spoke with Richard Davidson of Andrews University. He agreed that um, uh, the word in Hebrew for knock is dafak. It has a, includes a severe meaning, like in Judges 19 when they were beating the door down, knock. So uh, I just say, now that's three. Uh, in Revelation 6, we hear one of the, the, the attention is called to the 
white horse uh, by one of the uh, living creatures that's uh, and it's 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 John heard thunder John heard thunder saying come and see well thunder it, it, it happened that first creature happened to be the lion of Judah and when John heard thunder it was a roar a roar is, you know, it says the Lord will roar, the heavens and earth will shake. So that's the encoded earthquake in Revelation 6.1 as a roar. And then in uh, Revelation 10.3, mighty angel comes down and cries as a lion roars. So that again is uh, uh, encoding an earthquake as, as roar before the seven thunders. It says uh, there's an earthquake in Revelation 8.5 before the seven trumpets. Uh, they prepared a sound in verse 6. And uh, the knock, the roaring of the sea, the uh, trumpet, all of those saying, God's, God's trying to get our attention. There's going to be a big earthquake because it's going to, I think, simultaneously, it'll be, those are different facets of it. Um, the Laodicean message that we know uh, uh, now as the Laodicean church with uh, general conference uh, leadership and so on, a uh, lot of problems and difficulties, I think it will be drawn to a close just by a, a, an earthquake like uh, the ancient church of Laodicea was, and then there'll be only two movements, really, uh, moving toward the harlot or moving toward God and being part of his kingdom. And so that's why the church is not mentioned specifically after that, uh, but hopefully we can be on the right side of those issues. And the Revelation 6, uh, when the roar calls attention to the white horse. It's a message of truth for the end time, and we will be discussing that more next week uh, in terms of the uh, seven seals, the things by which we are sealed and by which we become his kingdom. Uh, it's um, One more little thought on that is that in Revelation 6, 1 and 2, the white horse, when John heard thunder, thunder is also linked to God's name. In John 12, verse 29 and 28 and 29, Christ asks uh, the Father to glorify his name, and the people heard thunder. And again in Revelation 14, 1 and 2, the 144,000 have the Father's name, and the second verse uh, has thunderings. So uh, you have to look at the different uh, contexts and see uh, where things fit, but I believe that we can be the 144,000, and we can have those seven topics, like his name, so we know what it is. Right now, uh, Lord and God are not names. Those are titles, and we most uh, Christians do not know God's name. We'll consider it later. Thank you very much. Please like this, uh, subscribe, uh, visit my website. Uh, I'll put the link below where you can get a copy of 9-11. Uh, it's how Christ used references uh, in his closing parables to Numbers 9, verse 10 and 11. As the days of Noah, supported by Numbers 9, verse 10 and 11. Uh, it's explained in the book, and you can take a look at it uh, on the, from the link below. But uh, people have liked it. Uh, five stars, please give it that. Uh, and uh, see you again later. Thank you so much. God bless.